keeping an eye on imaging. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack Cardiovascular Imaging. Hello, my name is Vaskin Dilsizian. I'm Associate Editor of Jack Imaging. With me in the studio is Dr. Henry Gewurz, who's Associate Professor at Harvard Medical School and Director of Nuclear Cardiology at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Henry, welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, you have a paper uh, in the current issue of Jack Imaging uh, where you looked at exercise-induced ST segment elevation as uh, an indicator of osteal LAD or left main stenosis. We found it very interesting because at least most of us look at the AVR lead as the uh, no man's land lead and we don't really pay attention to it much. And any change in the AVR, we tend to think that it would be reciprocal changes compared to the other leads. Perhaps you can tell us why AVR? Well, it's been known for some time that the um, lead monitors um, uh, intercavitary potential, and so it's capable of looking from the apex to the base of the heart from inside the heart. And so septal um, ischemia in particular is viewed as an injury current, and so it's sensitivity for um, detecting ischemia in that territory um, is well documented in the literature and um, well known electrophysiologically. So uh, I take it that uh, the basis of your study uh, in looking at exercise induced assignment elevation uh, was based on the acute coronary syndrome patients in the literature? Um, there. There are reports of that, as you're no doubt aware, but there also have been reports um, over the years of um, stress test induced um, ST elevation in non ACS um, patients. And um, we had seen a few cases um, anecdotally and decided to look at it more formally. Okay, so could you briefly tell us uh, how many patients you studied and what did you uh, find? So um, this was a retrospective um, analysis and um, search criterion um, ultimately included 454 um, patients of which um, roughly 75 or so had left main or osteo. Um, there were another 200 odd um, who had um, almost 300 who had one, two or three VD but not left main. And then there were 100 normal cases. So About. if we were to apply this clinically then, would you, what, would, what did you find as far as sensitivity and specificity and accuracy of using AVR? First, I guess, as identifying left main osteal LED and, and or overall coronary artery disease burden. So the principal um, objective, as you um, point out, was the left main and osteal LAD. And um, there the uh, sense was 75%, SPES was at 81%, overall predictive accuracy was at 80%, and that was by virtue of having 94% negative predictive accuracy and 44% positive um, predictive accuracy. And that was limiting the exercise to identification of left main or osteo um, LAD. Um, if you looked at any coronary disease, um, which we did not formally um, attempt to do, or I shouldn't say that, we did do that, but we didn't put the data together that way. We did find that um, variously 15, 25, and 40 percent of 1, 2, and 3 VD patients who did not have left main had ST elevation in AVR with stress. Great. So now, uh, when we look back at the, some of the publications that say the global risk assessment of coronary uh, cardiac events, uh, among the patients, I think there were 2,400 patients who underwent cardiac catheterization. The uh, prevalence of left main or three vessel disease, not just osteal LAD, uh, in that uh, registry was 56%, uh, realizing that they're not the same patient population. Perhaps it's worthwhile to discuss what are some of the other conditions that is false positive and false negative for AVR. For example, uh, pulmonary embolism, pericarditis, are those type of things we should be paying attention to? And they don't present in the chronic setting, obviously. They usually present more of an acute chest pain. But should we be worried about nonspecific uh, uh, STS segment elevation? 
Well, I guess one, the test isn't um, perfect. So going forward, um, the chance that the test will be truly positive for left main um, runs at 44%. Um, on the other hand, the incidence of that disease in the population that we studied was only 17%. So looked at in that way, the risk is tripled um, by virtue of having ST elevation in lead um, AVR. Um, pericarditis um, is often a contraindication to stress testing and um, is manifest with diffuse disease, as you know, and an AVR PR depression, mm -hmm. um, which is something that we didn't observe um, sure. in this study. Sure. Uh, now, what about myocardial perfusion imaging? Uh, yes. What did you find, and uh, what is the incremental value? Should we be paying attention to both EKG leads and perfusion imaging, or should one trump the other? Yeah, I, we did, definitely found um, that um, the ejection fraction, which is obtained after stress in our institution, um, correlated inversely. So it was a univariate and multivariate um, predictor, as was the extent of LAD reversible um, ischemia. So there's no doubt that the um, myocardial perfusion imaging um, typically with um, spec MIBI, um, but thallium works, of course, as you're very well aware, um, is important and um, does add um, value. Um, when you do the formal statistical analysis, the AUCs differ significantly, and the AUC on AVR is 0.82. That for the imaging um, signs is 0.62, and those differences are significant. That's great. So we, if I could summarize, uh, uh, Dr. Gwerthi, you, your, your paper uh, highlights the relevance of looking at the lead AVR beyond simply looking at perfusion imaging. Hmm. And um, in the cases of whether we have a normal perfusion study and elevated AVR, or lack of AVR elevation, but reversible LED perfusion defect, the goal would be to add these two data points together, since neither one of them are 100% accurate, and perhaps we can identify most a left main and the critical osseal LED lesion. Would that be yeah, a fair Yeah, I think summary? that that's reasonable, and, and I think um, as the paper um, shows, there's no doubt that you can have um, ST elevation um, without any of the typical imaging signs. In fact, scans that most experts would read as normal. So it's very important um, to look at the whole patient and all the data. Dr. Gwerth, it's mm. been a pleasure uh, for joining <laughs> us. And please uh, do read the current uh, Jack imaging issue to get more detail of this uh, very important paper. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it.